the oyster primer? Yes. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be on camera. <laughs> um, Would you please introduce yourself for posterity's sake? <laughs> My name is Chris. My name is Adam. Good to meet you, Adam, and camera. I'm Danny. Danny, good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, I work here at the farm. I, uh, I'm the director of marketing for Island Creek. Um, I used to work on the farm full time, but now I do a lot of desk work and a lot of farm tours. So. Um, Take it for what it's worth. I wrote the oyster primer. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much. My work. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> uh, Castle Virginica. Good work. Do you know all five species? The Latin names. The Latin names. I know the 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 genus of genus. all of them. So the Castle <laughs> ca versus Ostrea. But I go. can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember the species of each now. one of them. Sweet. Uh, well, we only have one species here, more or less. Um, Virginica. Basically what we're going to do today is take you through uh, the process of kind of farming an oyster from start to finish, you know, just kind of bring life to what you've already read about uh, in the primer and whatever other literature you were forcibly made to engage with. Um, so hopefully that will be valuable for you. Uh, I should probably give you, you guys know the kind of history of Island Creek, the company, um, I guess that's probably in the primer too. That skip started everything um, after graduating from college back in 1992. Are we, do you, I don't want to tell you the stuff that you already know. I'm not personally. I know the story. <laughs> I'm not personally familiar with that story. Okay. Um, so basically, Skip graduated from Merrimack College in 1992. Billy, his father, had been a commercial lobsterman. Skip had grown up working on the bed, uh, digging mussels mostly. So he decided to come back. Um, to Duxbury and work in the Bay at least for a couple more years after college instead of going down to New York or into Boston to get a job in finance or something like that. Um, so in order to kind of make it sound like a good idea, he decided to start growing clams, which at that point in this region was pretty rare. Um, aquaculture was really new uh, and everyone kind of told him he was crazy to do it. Uh, the clams worked out well for about five years and then they got a parasite called QPX and they all died. Um, so he decided to start over, uh, but he decided not to grow clams, he decided to grow oysters. And that was really crazy, because back then, the only place that grew oysters around here was Wellfleet, and they were wild, and they weren't very, you know, they weren't very high quality. There wasn't a consistent supply, so there wasn't very many restaurants in Boston that actually carried oysters. Um, so everyone told him he was even crazier than when they told him he was crazy for growing clams. Uh, it worked out though. Uh, it turned out that Duxbury Bay, due to a specific set of natural conditions, which we will talk about today, was um, one of the best places, probably in the world, to grow oysters. Um, so, kind of flash forward to around 2001, the oyster market had bottomed out after Skip had gotten some of his friends involved in the game, um, and he decided to hop in the truck and drive to Boston. He drove to East Coast Grill knocked on the back screen door and Chris Ledger was there. He said, you want to try my oysters? I farm these down in Duxbury. Uh, and Chris was like, sure. And he tried them and they were like, he was like, these are unbelievable. Bring them whenever you got them. And that was kind of the birth of the Island Creek Wholesale Company. Um, now kind of flash forward to the present, we have around 89 restaurants in Boston that carry oysters, uh, that carry our oysters. Uh, we have another 75 restaurants that we sell to down in New York. Uh, and that number's growing. We have FedEx chefs that we work with all over the country, um, you know, in California, Florida, Chicago, Texas. Um, the Island Creek oysters are featured on the menu at the French Laundry and have been for the past eight or ten years, I think. Um, and also at Per Se. They've been in La Verna Den, Momofuku, the White House, pretty much everywhere. Um, so along with all of that business we were able to kind of develop a brand which we've leveraged to do things like open the restaurant which I think you're all familiar with and uh, and also do the oyster festival that we have every year on Dutch Ray Beach that funds our foundation which does aquaculture product projects in Haiti and in Zanzibar and um, hopefully there'll be more of those to come. Uh, so that's kind of the background. You hear me referring to this grower or that grower. Uh, the way Island Creek is structured is that there's 16 farmers 
they're all kind of independent entities that choose to sell to Island Creek, the wholesale company. So um, Skip's Farm is the biggest out of all of them, and he produces the most oysters. But there's a bunch of other guys that, that produce the oysters that you eat at the restaurant as well. Um, let's see, what else? The, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, like I said, what we're going to do is kind of go start to finish. Unfortunately, there seems to be some sort of ecology class in here right now. So, <laughs> I think we'll, we'll start with the hatchery, um, or we'll finish with the hatchery rather than start with the hatchery. Um, so, we won't disturb the little kitties. Uh, and also, the hatchery is kind of only half running right now because of the time of year. Uh, in the spring is when the hatchery really ramps up. So, there's not too much to see. Um, but basically, to inform the rest of the tour until we get back here, the hatchery is where the oysters mate more or less. They don't grow naturally in Duxbury Bay because the water is too cold for them to spawn. If they, the water has to get up to 75, 80 degrees for the oysters to actually release their gametes into the water and spawn. So there's no native oysters here. Everything that we harvest each year, we either buy from other hatcheries or we grow here in our own hatchery ourselves. Um, so uh, when they come out of here, they're about the size of a pepper flake, like a ground flake of pepper, and, uh, and they go into the upwellers, which are down on the dock, uh, which is the first step that we'll be seeing today. So, if anyone has any questions at any point, feel free to uh, feel free to pipe up. Uh, don't worry about interrupting me. I'm easily distracted, but I generally find my way back to what I was talking about at some point. And if I don't, nothing I'm saying is that important. So, um, so yeah, yeah, we we'll just walk this way and check out the upwellers.